Welcome to the Glazoff Gang. Tonight, probably the best Glazoff Gang ever. We have three new Titans with us, three new members of the Glazoff Gang. Our first guest, Kai Chen, coming from China. He is the author of One in a Billion, Journey Toward Freedom. Karen Kenny, the founder of the San Fernando Valley Patriots. And John Duffy, a film producer from the Bronx and a former tough guy, and still is, right? <laughs> if you say so. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Glass Off Gang. On a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the highest, how excited are you to be a new member of the gang, Kai? Mm, 11. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. 11, Karen? At least a 9. A 9? Okay. <laughs> and John? He's taller than me, so I'm going to go with a 10. <laughs> a 10? Okay. Now... Uh, have you watched the Glazoff Gang before? Do you know the rule about the Glazoff Gang? I watched it before. Okay, yes. what is the rule of the Glazoff Gang? Uh, uh, I don't know if there's any rule. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there, know, there's, a, there's yes. a rule because you're, oh, you know it? I think so. Okay. I think so. Yeah. Okay. Something to do with an eagle song. Yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? What, what's Hotel the, California. Okay, so what's the rule now that you're gang members? Once you get We don't in. have to get a tattoo, do we? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm out of here. We have to get a tattoo. No, okay. you can check out any time you like, but... You can never leave. Ooh. You can ne never leave the you gang. You can never leave, oh, okay? Man. So now you're a member of the gang, you can never leave, okay? Wow, it sounds like the mafia. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and how do each of you feel about that? Are you okay with that, no. Kai? Perfect, okay. It's perfect? Perfect, Because you're okay. from China, you can't... Yeah, because you're from <laughs> Russia. That's why... <laughs> That's why we have the same background. You say gang to this guy, uh, okay. he goes, okay. What I'm afraid of. <laughs> okay, Karen, how do you feel about that? I feel like it's with these gentlemen, I'm fine. Okay, and John? Hey, I'm down with it. You're down? Oh, yes. Okay, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining the Glazoff Gang. We've got so much to do, but each of you are such important big people that I want to talk a little bit about each of you and I want our viewers to get to know you because each of you are very special in your own special way. This is kind of like, <laughs> this is kind of like an affirmation. That's what period. my mom tells me too. Okay, <laughs> let us begin with Karen. You are one of the five leaders of the Tea Party conservative groups nationwide. You testified before the House and Means Committee in Washington, D.C. On, on June 4th, 2013, regarding the IRS scandal. Yes. I saw the clip, very poetic, very profound. Tell us why you testified and what the IRS was doing to your group and everything. We were one of, it turns out, we thought initially 300 groups nationwide, but there were more than 500 conservative Tea Party groups that were singled out, targeted, if you will, for special scrutiny on applications for tax-exempt status. Back in 2010, as you probably remember, there was a conservative influx of um, groups into the political movement who wanted to get constitutional conservative principles out. And what happened with our group, we were applying for a grant and we needed to create the structure of a nonprofit status. And to do that, we needed both nonprofit and tax exempt. From the feds, we wanted a 501c4. Not to get lost in the weeds, the application process, we covered everything finances, corporate officers, all of the legal stuff. But we didn't hear anything nothing from them for 15 months and then bam in february 2012 that's when all the letters went out from lois lerner from the cincinnati office of uh, uh, tax exempt organizations and our single questionnaire the first one we had three our first one was 33 questions 80 different sub points of inquiry down to practically the astrological sign of our membership. It was they wanted copies of everything that we handed out, uh, recordings of speakers, um, uh, political affiliations of the speakers, uh, copies of dates and times and names of our rallies, who was there, uh, how many people attended. It was beyond scrutiny. It was like getting a proctology exam, as I've said before. And what happened, that was one of three by the third one, within a period of six months, I said no. When they were asking for tax information on our members, I said no. And it turns out that that's when, being grassroots, we hook up by phone weekly and we talk to each other. Is this happening to you? Yeah. Is this happening to you? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. From across the country. So we got together by phone. Seventy group leaders from across the country 
were on that call, the first one. This was back in 2010. And from there, thank God for groups like Freedom Works and TeaPartyPatriots.org, they put together an inquiry. How many of you folks nationwide? And it was because of the Tea Party Patriots and Freedom Works that they were really to see the scope of this. And that's how we ended up. The people that I testified with before Ways and Means, these were people that you would want to have as a neighbor. They were just wonderful. But it was a grueling experience. Karen, what's happening? Uh, there's obviously a persecution happening. It's, it's, it's the government. It's the Obama administration. Is this coming from on top? People have asked me that. I think it's at least coming from the Secretary of the Treasury. Mm -hmm. We know Lois Lerner ped, pled the fifth and then uh, um, got paid leave and then decided to, to, to quit. But I think it goes at least to this uh, Secretary of the Treasury and more than likely up as high to the White House or someone in so the Karen, White House. So Karen, where do we stand now? Are, uh, is this being investigated? Are we going to find things out? Are people going to get in trouble? What's happening? Well, Ways and Means did their investigation. Okay. Oversight is doing one now. Our group is one of 41 groups that are being represented by the American Center for Law and Justice, Jay Seculo's group, mm -hmm. in individual lawsuits, not class actions, individual lawsuits okay. against the abuses of this. And okay. what's going to come out is going to stun people. Wow. If they can do this to a small group of ours, we were small, we've grown since this. Mm -hmm. We have now several hundred So people. in some ways it was a blessing, perhaps? Yeah, because, yeah. see, while people are ambivalent about the Tea Party with all the, all the tars and feathers that that has, mm. what we found out is they hate the IRS more. So when, you know, the friend of my enemy is my friend, yeah. or the enemy of my enemy is my friend, <laughs> so, so people that, you, you can't do that to those people. No, if we don't agree with them, the IRS... No, nobody likes the IRS. Okay, nobody fantastic. feels warm and fuzzy about and them. And thank you for being courageous and sure. standing up to these bullies. And let's see what happens after these with these lawsuits, because information's going to come out. You betcha. Uh, John and Kai, I didn't tell you. I'm just going to talk to Karen the entire time, and you guys are going to listen. Okay. <laughs> we're, good, we're both good listeners. She's already complimented us. So, okay. <laughs> but one more thing. Karen, yes. I don't want to scare my guests, but you are also a psychotherapist, right? Guilty as charged. Yeah, right? uh, are we pretty normal so far? You don't want to. Where's see? the uh, Normal when you <laughs> when you find out what normal is, would you please tell okay. me? Okay, we are going to now move over to the one and only Kai Chen. You, your family, suffered under the. Cultural Revolution in China, you faced a lot of persecution there. Just tell us briefly a little bit what, what your background is, your suffering under the communist system and how you ended up in the land of the free. Oh, uh, born in Beijing, I, I was born in Beijing in um, 1953, and uh, you can see I just turned 60. <laughs> but uh, I went through all the um, political movement in China, including Cultural Revolution and everything. You know, Were you uh, a communist at one time? No, no, I was never a member of the Communist Party okay. because our family background prevented us from, from okay. uh, being recruited by mm -hmm. because I have uh, Taiwan relatives. Okay. A lot of Taiwan relatives, in, that's a big thing. And, and then because of that, you know, uh, even after I, I was recruited by the national team in the training camp, I was kicked out because they found out my family has Taiwan relatives. But you're a great basketball player. You played basketball, right? I played basketball only after the ping pong diplomacy <laughs> that, right. that uh, opened up because the Chinese the authorities realized you can use sports as some kind of a tool okay. to open China up and, and uh, diplomatically. Okay, just so, a sec. I just want to interrupt for a minute. So you played basketball. We're trying to find what we have in common here. Did you play basketball, John? <laughs> well, I just came from playing basketball tonight. Matter of fact, we won okay. by 17 okay, points. Okay, so you're a basketball player? I still player? play basketball. I grew up in the streets of the Bronx playing Okay, basketball. so a one-on-one, -on -one, you not. we don't know what might happen. You know, and, that's going to be a tough one. And he, Karen, <laughs> kill me. do you play basketball or like basketball? I'm a great fan. You're a great fan of I'm basketball. Fan. Okay, so let us continue. And, and uh, your family suffered persecution? Yeah, not only that. I, 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 I don't want to talk too much about my family because okay. I'm the most important thing. Remember? <laughs> oh yeah. Wow. Okay. So I realized then I eventually I realized you know my self identity is the most important thing. I, I realized I was born in America, only born in the wrong place. Uh, before I thought you know before I, I, I thought I was born Chinese and I chose to be American. Later I thought that definition doesn't fit because my men, me, mentally spiritually I never was accepted in that country. I never identified with that mm -hmm. culture at all. 
So uh, eventually, you know, I rise up. You were an American born in a Chinese body. Uh, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Then, then eventually, you know, I was, you know, rising up uh, after I got kicked out and I returned to the Chinese national team in 1978 after all that years and um, participated in the first, uh, you know, historically for China in okay. the first uh, uh, world championship. Kai, do you consider yourself in terms of skill and ability sort of like a LeBron James or Kobe Bryant? Well, back then I was, you know, you have to be much better than everybody else right. to be recruited because of my family background. Okay. You, you see, because they didn't trust you. And every time I, I went abroad and uh, on a tour to, you know, abroad, they have to assign a communist party member to stay with me in the same hotel room. Wow. They have to do that. that. Every time, well. I know that. But yeah. it's, 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 uh, it's sort of like the IRS persecuting Karen. It's, this, it's the same virus. Yeah. They're, they're following you. They're persecuting you, right? Kai, I want to ask you, uh, because we need to move on, but uh, there were times in your life under that communist regime where they forced self-denunciation sessions on you. Constantly. Can you Const tell, give, give us an example. What was it? You had to denounce yourself, recriminate yourself? Oh, constantly. You give know, us an example. What? Because every time, you know, that you, you show anything of your individuality and you are subject to criticism mm -hmm. because you are a collective member and you're never an individual, which I realized... Even if I, I try to hide in the crowd, I couldn't. <laughs> so I better accept myself as an individual. So um, eventually I rise up and then at my peak of my career, uh, I left because China just opened up, you know, uh, a little bit after Mao died, yeah. you know, opened up. I, I left and I came here and I did uh, a lot of things um, in, uh, before the Beijing Olympics. You know, I published the book. Okay, his and, book, yeah. Kai's book is One in a Billion, Journey Toward Freedom. Get it, and you'll find out about his story and tell them what that CD is. Is that you rapping? Oh, is this it? is uh, <laughs> the TV program uh, uh, done by a TV station called the New, New Town Dynasty. Uh, it's Falun Gong-based anti-communist TV station. Okay. And they did a four-episode uh, um, TV program about my life. And okay. what I, I do in America? Where can it be found? What is it called? What's the title? It's called. You can you can uh, you can find it on YouTube. What is it called? English subtitle called My Way. My Way. Okay. Yeah. Called My Way. Okay, Kai. Thank yeah. you very much. All right, thank you. And we'll get into a little bit more. Wow, we've got some real titans here with us. And John Duffy, who coincidentally is a former Maoist. That is correct. But let's just start with that for a minute. What was wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> good, good question. Uh, well, I grew up in a, in the South Bronx, like I mentioned, and. Um, at the time, in the 60s, there was a big influence in, of groups like the Black Panthers in my neighborhood. I was one of the only white families in the neighborhood. So I hung out with people in the Black Panthers or their Puerto Rican version, the Young Lords Party. So I hung out with them. Both of them were Maoist groups. And through that, I got introduced to Maoism and, and the uh, writings of that and began to get involved in organizing and became a Maoist through that. And I was a high school dropout. I dropped out of school at the age of 15. So I didn't have a lot of positive uh, role models, and that was what I was presented with. And it seemed at the time that communism was a utopia, and that's what it was being presented at, and that it was for poor people. And I grew up poor. My parents were Irish immigrants, the first generation who came during the Great Depression. So I got caught up into being a, a communist and went all the way to the top. I was uh, on the Central Committee of a uh, Communist Maoist Party in the United States Goodness. and led a trip to China in 1978 when he was playing basketball Maybe you over there. Into each other. I, walked on, I walked on the Great Wall. We met with all the you know, leaders you of China. Can you speak uh, Ni Hao Ma? Ni Hao Ma, Che Che, and that. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. Gone by. We did too much drinking right. over there, so okay. I probably forgot all that. But. So, but you finally <laughs> left that hell, and you realized that it was a totalitarian journey? Well, uh, yes. And it, over a period of a couple of years, you know, different experiences kind of woke me up that instead of communism being a utopia, it was really a nightmare. You look at what happened in the worst cases, like in, in Cambodia with Pol Pot, was the most extreme, the killing fields. Yeah. But the same thing was happening in China with the Cultural Revolution, the millions of people no, were the killed in that. Forward. And the the forward. The yeah, and then it happened in million people died. Okay. Exactly. Okay, and you finally left the left. Now, just before we move on, I had some of my uh, private investigators investigate each uh, member because we look into people's backgrounds. Is it true that you walked across hot coals a dozen times <laughs> in firewalks with Tony Robbins? Yes, absolutely. With I, bare feet, you actually walked on <laughs> yeah. hot 
Yes. So how did you do that? <laughs> well, it, you know, the, 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 whole ex, the whole idea of, of firewalking experience is basically overcoming fear. And whatever you're afraid of in life, firewalking is just a metaphor to whatever, to whatever you're afraid of to be able to do it. Now, of the dozen times, 11 times I didn't get burned, one time I got burned every step of the way and it was like sizzle, 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 sizzle. And uh, it hurt and I had blisters, but the experience was that's life. Sometimes you get burned and you deal with it anyway. And so okay. it's a metaphor for how to deal with fear in life. And so that's one of the experiences I've had. And, you're, and, so, and you've gone from the Bronx to being a Hollywood film producer, right? That's correct. Okay, fantastic. Uh, we didn't even get to any of the issues for this <laughs> segment. We just got two minutes left. How about just some afterthoughts on each person and what we think at this point? Karen? I think about this experience. And or what Kai and John uh -huh. have said so far as a psychotherapist. I am, <laughs> well, I'm not diagnosing, but okay. thank, as thank a tea you. party person, <laughs> I want to have this man speak to my group because he was a man, he was a patriot born, American born in a different country. And this man has a whole new definition of what hard knocks are. And so I identify in some way with both of them. Kai, some words of wisdom? Oh, I'm, I'm more concerned about America than I'm concerned about China because I think America is changing. You know, I, I came here in 1980, 81, that's during the Reagan years. And then now, you know, I, I did the protest, you know, after I did the um, Olympic Freedom Run, before the Beijing Olympics, I protested against Mao's portrait in Alhambra City Hall mm -hmm. and Mao's kitchen in Hollywood, Mao, you see, and, and Mao's, Mao's statue in Nixon Library. Goodness gracious. And, and Confucius classrooms and Confucius Institute in American institutions. See, Kai, you and I ran away from communism in some ways just to see Obama trying to reinstall exactly. it here. 30 seconds left for this segment. We go to the Buddha of Wisdom, John Duffy, to end this segment. Well, it's great meeting him and, and hearing your experiences because one of the biggest things I learned was meeting people who actually experience communism. It was probably the thing that gave me the most education as to what really communism was, the nightmare that it was. Because we saw it from the outside, and even today, in the college campuses, students are told that it's a great uh, thing, communism. Teachers are teaching them that. But the reality, your lives tell the reality of what it really is, and it isn't what it's presented as. It's a nightmare, and that's what people need to know. Thank you very much, and we're going to talk about the nightmare that's on the horizon for the United States with these three titans in just a minute. We'll see you then. Thank you.